Kei te taho, Jody Ihaka, te toi hau o te runanga o ngai tahu a Mark Solomon. Ke moi hau mai rā koutou e titiro ana ia ki ngā hua o te rū i te pokapū o o tautahi mō te wā tuatahi. Jody. Kia ora, kia ora Scotty. Kia ora Mark. Good, thank you. This is your first time back into the central business district since the earthquake. What was going through your head as we brought you in? Um, disbelief, really. Um, shock. The city that I've lived in all my life, it's not here now. It's a totally different terrain. See buildings, iconic buildings like the cathedral, the Catholic cathedral, the church on the corner of Madras Street, which is just rubble. It's not even the outline of a building. To look at all the communities to the east, we have got a major disaster here. Where were you when you heard and found out about the earthquake? I was in a meeting in Wellington, and how I found out, I just happened to look up from talking to the people I was with. There was a TV monitor, no volume, and all I saw the words going across the screen, massive earthquake hits Christchurch, multiple deaths. Um, of course, I left the meeting immediately, straight away tried the airport, couldn't get home. It took me close to two hours to contact anyone to find out that my whanau was, was well. What was that two hours like for you? Um, extremely emotional. To, but to be honest, the biggest emotion that hit was guilt. I'm here in Wellington and my family's down at home on their own. Um, and that two hours before I got through to my daughter, who I knew had been in the Hereford Street building, where I knew the bulk of it, it, it the central CDB. So just getting her, it was a very emotional phone call. Um, what had happened to her? She'd been caught in the lifts at work. Uh, her and two other guys from work rode it out. They managed to force the doors open and it was stuck in the doorway and they had a small gap that they managed to squeeze their way through out into the foyer, out onto the street. And as she came out onto the street, all she could see was the bits falling from the buildings. But for my daughter, the, the worst memory from her was a mother screaming, looking for her child. And she spent half an hour, her and some other staff from work, spent half an hour with this woman trying to find this girl, calling out her name, and then they got separated. And as my daughter says, I can't get her voice out of her, my mind, and I'll never know whether that woman found her child unless I run into her. So that's her hard thing to get through. Um, my son, my whāngai, he rushed out of their building into the car park. The ground opened up with about a metre wide chasm. He managed to stop himself and he threw his hand out and stopped a young Asian girl from running in. And as they fell backwards, the ground just closed. So it went from a metre wide gap to a quarter inch gap instantly. Horrifying. Absolutely, and that's his, that he can't get out of his mind. That just, that slapping shut. Um, so now it's been horrific. Have you actually lost anyone from your whānau? Naitahu has had two confirmed mati to date. Um, none in my immediate family, but a lot of my family have had serious damages to their homes. But as every one of them has said, who cares we're alive? And our message that we've been pushing out to everyone is stay safe, look after your whānau, look after your neighbour. So Mark, how exactly has Ngai Tahu, as an iwi, reacted to this? Um, we met again at 1 o'clock, sorry, 12 o'clock on the Wednesday. By 12.30 we had our 0800 Ngai Tahu number our open. We had an 0800 Whairawa number. We had already started taking calls. Our whole system is gone. Our building is in the centre of Hereford Street, so we're slow to rebuilding our comms. We hopefully will have our computer systems up and running again by Monday. Um, we've met with the local Māori community. Beautiful message. There's no you, there's no me, there's only us. Um, we're collectivised. We've brought all the Māori providers together ask them to table a stock take of what they can offer into the community so that we can link in with all the other services to help out in the community. At our meeting, Te Arawa, Tainui turned up, um, 13 doctors, 18 nurses, where do you want them? 
today, there's been a huge response from Māori Katoa across the country. In fact, we've got three container loads of non-perishable goods like napkins, water, blankets. They're on their way. They'll be here sometime today. We've set up a sort of a container park out at Wigram so we can receive this. We're in contact with uh, Red Cross. How do we get this stuff out into the communities? How do you do that? Do you know? Well, you've got to, you, the reality is you have to work in with the uh, response teams. Otherwise, you're cross, crossing lines. They don't know where you are. It's very dangerous out there. So all we've said to everyone, just slow down. Let us get stopped. Let us work in. So we've linked in with the police. I believe there's 160 Māori wardens on their way. The first contingent's arriving today, 30. Um, but 160 people have got to have somewhere to stay, got to be fed, got to be ferried in and out. So we linked in with the police, and the police have taken over that part of it. Where are they going to stay? Will they be in, in the marae? What, what's the state of the marae around here? All the marae of Canterbury are open. Banks Peninsula, Tuahiwi, they're already taking in people. I know Tuahiwi's had them in since um, Wednesday. Rapaki, as of last night, had 38 people staying. Wairewa, Onuku, Tomutu are all open, they're all safe, and they're ready, and the phone numbers are in. When you're ready, ring us, and we're, we're open. And do you have to be um, related to that marae no. to go and use it? It's, look, everything we do is based on the community. It's all of us. Of course we've got um, special concern for our families, but we're part of this community. This disaster has hit everyone, and our response is for the people of the community of, of Christchurch. Given the September earthquake, how prepared were you for this one? Um, I think a lot of us were prepared. Uh, a lot of us had our emergency kits, but the reality is... You can't prepare for it. You can have your emergency equi uh, equipment, but when it hits, you are just part of the furniture like everything else. You ride it out, you survive, you get on with rebuilding. And the way to do it is that you do it together as a community. Mark, Ma Tahu have a lot of property holdings within the city. What can you tell me about the state of those buildings? To be honest, Jody, nothing. What I can say is that everyone got out of our building alive and that is the top importance. Um, we don't know whether our building is, has survived, if it's reusable, whatever. Whatever happens, happens, but the important thing is our people are safe. Mark, when Māori die, we have karakia and there is a tikanga process around dealing with the dead. Yes. Has anything like that been carried out here in the city? Yes, it has. Uh, mana whenua were at the meeting on Wednesday and it came up about, well, what about all the people that are coming in internationally um, to pick up their, their dead? And that's a mana whenua issue. So they've already organised, I believe, there was a big karakia ceremony on some site yesterday um, and that will continue. We're handling that at the marae level. Do you want to go in and have a look at Te Waipaunamu House or your other buildings? Um, no, simply because the priority at the moment is rescue and recovery. If you're in there, you're just interfering in what's happening. I don't need to, to go in to see what sort of disasters there. You've only got to look at the images on the TV. You've only got to t talk to the survivors that got out of it to know how bad it is. Um, no, keep out, let the rescuers, let, the, let them do their job. What's next for you, Mark? For Naitahu, we've, we're slowly rebuilding our infrastructure, our computer system, everything is in the building. We have identified another one of our buildings that by the end of next week, hopefully, we'll have the facility for about 50 of our staff to come back in. The following week, we'll have port portable buildings in. It's important to get our people back to work as soon as possible, get some normality back into their lives. We've set up counselling, etc., for all of our staff. We're extremely concerned as Fano about counselling available for in the communities. I do know of one of our our marae, uh, the Komata, are too scared to sleep in their houses. They're sleeping out on the verandas. Okay. Um, mm. Services are needed. Is there many of them who have said to you, "We've had enough. It's time to move out of Christchurch." Well, there's a really interesting question. Yes, there have been a lot of people to just pack up and leave. And I'm just going to talk to Mark Solomon, who's still standing here with me now, about 
keeping Ngaitahu people in the city, Mark, lots of people have been leaving. How do you actually hope to keep them here? Or is that is it a good thing to do that? Well, at this stage, the importance is not about keeping them here. But if their families are leaving the town, then they let, need to let us and all the authorities know. If you've got a house that's demolished and you've left the city, that house could have to be researched because no one knows where you are. So we've sent out a message to all of our marae that have people staying. Please get their names, their addresses, uh, all the family together so we can let the Red Cross know and then those properties can be crossed off the list. They don't have to go and search. So while it's good that people have got away, we also need to know that you're safe. You mentioned before that a number of Māori wardens are coming. Yes. What would their role be here? Um, well, that's again, we've linked them with the police for them to use them. Um, but I would say that security in the streets at night, um, there have been a lot of burglaries going on in some of the, bad er the badly damaged areas. Um, a cousin came and visited me last night. One street over from her, Friday night, 15 houses were burgled. Now, they've put themselves together in like a neighbourhood watch, but they haven't had much sleep for five days. Wardens on the ground like that at night time can give them a bit of rest, let them have some sleep. You said before that iwi leaders came down. You had a hui at Rehua Marae. What, what was the actual outcome of that? Well, we met on at Rehua Marae on Wednesday to, with all, all Māori to look at how, how we're going to respond to this. I'd like to quote the words of the Chief Executive Officer of the Urban Māori Authority, Norm Jews. He looked me in the face and says, Mark, there's no you, there's no me, there's only us. And that's how it's got to be. Our sort of our mission statement, if you could put it, that we've adopted for this is Aroha Nui ki tangata. Our job collectively is to come together, to link in with the support processes here, get out into our communities and help our people. Have you had any word from, say, some of the other iwi leaders, you know, you're part of that massive iwi leaders group, about them giving money? Um, Is it needed? Yes. Um, we've had... There are donations coming in. At the meeting on Wednesday, as an example, Tukui Morgan of Tainui and a representative from uh, Roger Pikia from Te Arawa walked in. We have 13 doctors and 18 nurses ready. Where do you want them? Last night I co contacted one of the doctors on the medical response team. Hey, Tainui, Te Arawa, 13 doctors, 18 nurses, where do you want them? So they are now in contact with them to put them where it's appropriate to have them in the community. We were talking before about the counselling and what Māori do to cope with grief. In Carmen's package we saw a whānau pull out the guitar. Is it too soon to start singing, Mark? <laughs> Anything you can do to release the stress is not too soon. Um, you notice that when you touch people, they're vibrating. Uh, they're that stressed. And I think the best, one of the best ways about getting over stress is that you've got to talk. You've got to talk it over. Um, sometimes your yeah, discussions don't make sense, but that doesn't matter. Just keep talking. And it helps to relieve the stress. Is this the worst thing that ever happens in Ngaitahu? It's definitely the worst thing that I've ever experienced in my life. Um, earthquakes are a natural part of the process of Papatuanuku, but it's hit. We just have to cope. The last time we talked during the September earthquake, there was a lot of kōrero from Māori saying Papatuanuku, Mother Earth, is angry. What, what are you making of that now? Maybe. Um, all I'm thankful is my whānau's alive. A lot of them have lost their homes. Their own words, who cares, we're alive. Um, my cousin, who the whole side of her house fell off, all she can say to me is, my community's munted. She wasn't worried about her house. They were safe. It's about her whole community is, in a sense, destroyed. Um, that's where we've got to focus. We are part of a community, and we've got to look after each other. That's how we'll get through this. If we come together, look after each other. We had reports this morning, obviously because of the, the earthquake, the sewage system is overflowing and things are being pushed directly back out into the hour. Yes. The same and happened one. in the last time. Um, all the sewage poured into the rivers. It's 
a result of a natural disaster. Yes, we don't like it. It will be fixed when it can be. Um, the primary importance today is rescuing people, recovery, and looking after the people out in the damaged areas. That's the primary importance. What is it that sort of needs to happen, um, say now, for family who aren't fully involved with their iwi or maybe too whakama to actually reach out to help? And Carmen's package, she went to some people, uh, talked to some people in a very poor community who felt too embarrassed to, to reach out. W what are you going to do to, to help them? Um, again, we've opened up our 0800 number and... Um but it's about Fano. I got a full report on the condition of Port Levy simply by texting Fano in the area. How is everyone? Is there damage to the homes? Is the fuddy open? And I had two texts come back within 10 minutes saying all the houses are fine, everyone's fine, fuddy's fine, we've got plenty of water, plenty of food. Just remember, Mark, that a lot of us over here are elderly, maybe a doctor once a week, stuff like that. So we're getting the data on our and they're talking. They're talking to people that might be too whakamātu um, ask for help, but their whānau knows that they need help, so they let us know. Uh, has anything specifically been done to, say, help uh, our pakeke, our elders? Um, at this stage, the families are all coming together. Rāpaki, as I say, has 38 on their marae. A lot of them are elders. Of course the families are coming together and um, uh, looking after them. But I do believe that not too far in the future we need grief counsellors, etc., out there in the communities. This is a huge disaster that's affected everybody, and stress levels are going to go through the roof. I mean, an example, an old toa rung me yesterday to tell me that she was going to live with her daughter in Australia. Now, I'd spoken to her about a, two, three weeks ago. She is an elder, but she had a very strong voice. She was a broken old lady. Uh, the fear, the shake in her voice. Um, and it was almost like she was ringing to apologise that she was scared and had to leave. I said, don't be silly, aunt, you go with your girl. Um, we've got contact, email me, text me and we'll talk, but don't be silly, you go where it's safe. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of trauma out there that will need a lot of counselling. What kind of support have you actually had from other iwi? You, you mentioned before about your cell phone. Yep. The outpouring that has come from iwi Kātoa, Māori and corporations, Māori companies across the country has been absolutely beautiful, is the best way I can put it. Um, for example, we've got three container loads of goods arriving today, which will be taken out to... Uh, some property we've got out at Wigram, we've linked in with Red Cross, we've linked in with uh, Salvation Army. How do we distribute this into the community? Um, you might have seen the Māori news last night about Pipitea. I know it's been organised through the Iwi Chairs. There's centre points to take your goods that you wish to gift. Um, Toll, New Zealand, have come to the party. They will supply containers, a freezer container for food, etc. And we've got it for the duration as, as long as we need it. So the outpouring from the Māori community is uh, huge. It would be fair to say that their preference is that the relief goes straight out into the community. Um, they've got Fano down here like we have. All of them have uh, said to us that they will coordinate and everything goes through NATO. We're working closely with TPK, the police and other agencies. We need to get to our people. What kind of support have you had on a political level? Wednesday we met with the Minister of Māori Affairs, the Māori Party, TPK, the police, etc. The support has been outstanding. Anything we need to facilitate our response has been given to us. TPK is constantly keeping us updated with what's going on, what's available. Um, cannot fault them. In fact, I have nothing but utmost praise for them. It's been amazing. I've had contact with the Deputy Prime Minister. I've had contact with the Mayor of Christchurch. Um, they know that we're getting our response together. They know we're ready to go. We're linking in with all the different services.
It's obviously been more than a week since the rangatahi have been at school. What kind of things are in place to keep them busy? To be honest, I don't know. I do know a lot of ours have sent their kids north. Um, we've got a few kids from Christchurch now heading off to Tolaga Bay next week. Um, it's Kaitapai, my own whangai moko, they're heading north. Um, How do you feel about that? Don't you want them close? Yes, no. Um, I want them where they're safe. At the moment, they, they're starting to... They've stopped talking. They need to get out of here. And if they're going up with the, the other part of their whānau to be safe, hey, by we'll contact you. What do you mean they're still talking? Well, they're not talking as like they normally do. They're very uh, boisterous children, um, but they're sort of withdrawing and they're frightened. The slightest rattle in that, they're frozen. So it's better to get them away from it all. The aftershocks continue, obviously. Did you actually get used to them from September? I don't think you get used to them, ever. But I think you get to a point that you get so exhausted that, like last night, for the first time since Tuesday, I slept. Excuse me, Mark. Thank you so much for joining us.